This is a video about the IUCLID integration platform version 1.4.0 released in March 2024. It is meant as a relatively short overview because likely most of the viewers have seen previous versions of the IIP. IIP is the short term for IUCLID integration platform. Before you start, make sure you have the correct settings entered for your IUCLID instance. So the IRP connects to a live running IUCLID. This, these are my values I'm using. Currently, this is IUCLID 6 version 7. The next release of the IIP planned for May 2024 will support the next major IUCLID release planned for end of April. By the way, this uh, IRP release is uh, a release in, as a part of a series. We are planning new releases at least until mid of 2025. So please make sure you are following our developments. Before we start, I also want to point out the updated online help menu. So when you are on the home button, please click on the help here, the help menu. You get access to the online help and especially the first chapters will provide explanations in more detail to the keyboard entry and keyboard navigation, which is a major difference to the last release. I cannot explain all details in this video. So let's start looking at uh, a data set and I've chosen a substance. It's very similar for mixture and template. So here is a sample data set IRP demo 140. And if I want to access now the documents inside of this data set, I need to use what we call the breadcrumb here, the breadcrumb navigation. You see here the IIP demo is highlighted, it's the active substance and the complete document list is offered as a possibility for navigation downwards. So if I click this, it turns red and now I see the complete document list which currently consists of uh, those one, two, three, four, five, six documents. So now let's have a look at uh, how the interface looks like. Again, on the left side, you see the listing of the documents or the entities. Uh, if you need more space, you can, of course, move those sliders. On the right side, you see what has been selected in the leftmost part. So in this case here, the OHD855 residues in rotational crops, which is a relatively complex document. This is the reason why I show it. The document is actually empty or almost empty. Uh, what we see in this middle pane is what we call the document map. It shows you the structure of that document in this current form. So I quickly I, I, I scroll down, you see the fields and in bold, you see the blocks or if you have tables, you can also see the tables. And as I just demonstrated, if you click on the left side, you get the respective field on the right side directly highlighted. This uh, avoids that you need to scroll up and down and lose the context here. You directly see in what context you're in. Uh, it also works the other way around. So I scroll up here, I click here and I see where I am in this tree view. This gets more clearer if I actually hide the values. So then the structure here gets clearer and now I can click on the left side and I can navigate between the different blocks. So this is especially useful when you have multiple repeating blocks and um, 
can directly access it without scrolling. Um, one thing to show you is you may wonder what those uh, blocks mean. This, these are indicators when you have actually any data in the block. So let's just type in some uh, dummy data. I'll come to data entry in a second, portion ID 2, whatever this means. So now you see this has become active. Again, another example, if I type in something here, the respective icon will get activated. So using those indicators, you can have a good overview in what state the actual document is, whether it's relatively new or what part is filled. Good, for data entry, I want to show and use uh, other documents, but it basically works the same in all types of documents. That's no difference. It's just for demonstration purposes. Um, let's go to this document, let's load it. You see there is some da data in there. What is new in this release now is the possibility to use and navigate in this table similar to an Excel sheet. I can just type in some information, some dummy information, like you would do this in an Excel sheet. To do the demo, let's just delete the tables, add a new line. And for those of you knowing a Euclid, you can imagine what this would mean in a Euclid. So let's take some data that you have in your in-house system, either oh yeah, in in-house, either in Excel or in Word, and you have this prepared in a structure that is um, mapping, matching to what is needed here in a Euclid. Please note, you find no reference to um, a Euclid codes, so there is no 8576 for a code in a Euclid, there are no UUIDs, you can use the display values and not the technical values that a Euclid actually needs. Um, the IIP takes care with individual field validators, and are now paste, with their individual field validators to convert what you actually paste as a string into real internal values. So I now have a couple of errors. Why? So uh, you see here indications. There is no document gap three. Yes, this is correct. So let's simply change this. Sorry, wrong key. Just change this to gap one. You can just correct the value in here. The validator is running and the field gets white. So the field is correct. Then there is an error in gap two. Yes, in the previous demo, I have created a second gap two, which means now hmm, there are multiple matching documents. So of course now this doesn't work. So I just take this in here and paste gap one downwards. This is an error because I actually entered gap one and uh, gap two. I, I pasted multiple values, so let's also correct that one. Gap two is the same error as above. I correct this here and again. So I have now basically changed every reference to gap one because gap two is not unique. I can't reference in this case just using the number. Uh, what I would need to do, and we can do this quickly if you want, change the name gap2 to gap2.1 and then we could, uh, and then the name is unique and we would be able to quickly reference it. Similar example here, this is a reference of a substance, there is no metabolite 1, 2, 3. To correct this error, let's just take this value, paste it in here. And I do this now using my clipboard, similar to Excel, and correct the value. But I can also go in there and just delete values uh, as you would expect it in Excel. Now, this uh, is apparently an error in the 
units. So let's also change that. So what I just demonstrated is you can paste in table uh, data in tables. And when you see there are errors, you can directly fix it. Of course, now you can continue working. I can again put in gap one. I put um, tab and I can type in those values and continue. Um, so this is very X-like and this is the idea to make this uh, data-driven application, a form-based application where the access to the data is very intuitive and without many mouse movements, mouse clicks and so on. Now, what you may have noticed, I have actually typed in a value here for pick list. So this is a pick list either allowing parent or metabolite, you can really type in a pick list value. And actually you can do a little bit more. Sorry, you can just put, uh, type in a substring and it will uh, do um, a substring match. And if the substring match is unique, it will replace, it, it will select the full value and put it in for you. Uh, let's see if this works here as well. It, it's also uh, not specific for lower and uppercase, so you can type it also in lowercase. Um, for pick lists with um, so-called open pick lists, which have um, pick list values, but also allow other values, uh, as indicated in the upper cell, you get an indication when you type in a deviation. You get an indication using, sorry, didn't do, want to do that. Just um, hit the wrong pasting key. You get the indication that this is a deviation. Again, here you can also start typing in uh, your range. Now, uh, what do you do if uh, you don't know those values, those pick list values. I will show this, I will show you in a second. You don't need to guess. But uh, to do so, let's go to another document. Let's save this first. So now we, you could check in Euclid what we did. So you see here the actual references have been resolved. These are now the real references to the document or here the actual substance. So the text is being transferred to a real uh, reference or here we have um, transformed this to a real pick list value and also here to a real range. Here you cannot, for example, type in the unit in contrast to IRP. So this has all worked. Of course, what you can do is you could change here and let's maybe let's do this and, and show show you the effect. Uh, new remark. You can change here as you here and then we just uh, do an update here, a refresh here and you get the new remark here. So you can uh, work with both interfaces, it's the best of breed because IRP supports many things, but not all. So we are still, we have some restrictions, what value, uh, what field types we support. For example, there are restrictions having multi-pick lists uh, fields or some, some other complex field types. And there you can, you can still do the work in a Euclid. Now let's go to another document. Uh, let's go to this gap document. Uh, let's unhide the fields. Uh, let's go to the second one because this is still empty. I want to show you how to paste information in a block. So now this is block pasting. A similar scenario, imagine you have prepared data in-house in um, already matching format. You see here, you just have plain strings, nothing special. There's nothing behind. This is really plain, plain Excel. So 
or you just copy this range, control C, you go back to the IRP interface, you go on this cell and you paste. So interestingly, again, this is now a conversion that has uh, taken place. Let's save this first. Um, the conversion we see better if we now activate something which I have deliberately hidden so far, which we introduced, which is the so-called advanced editors. You see those uh, the, this button up here. You can uh, turn it on and off, either by clicking or with a control Q as a toggle, as a she uh, keyboard shortcut. Now let's go into this field and you see now the range, this is a range field, which we have copied from here. Sorry, from here, yeah, that's the field. We, we just took, take, took this, let's just redo it. I just paste it back in here. And now this has been automatically disassembled in its individual elements. So uh, if uh, you are not happy with that, for example, you don't know what the individual qualifiers are, you can now press, if you are in this edit mode, tap, and I'm not using the mouse key right now. Again, space, these are the standard commands in Windows applications. Now, that part doesn't fully work yet, the uh, arrow keys, but you can select the qualifier here. Again, tap. I could change the number if, you, if I want to 0 0.4. Now watch, uh, if I press tap, the 0 0.3 here will be updated to 0 0.4. Here the qualifier, again, space. Now uh, keyboard, arrow key up, down. I Confirm with enter, I press tap, I change the value to 0.9, again tap, and here are the possible units, and I can use the arrow keys to change the unit, and here we go. So again, either you prepare this information, let's take it out, um, again, you prepare this information in just a field, copy it in, just to um, delete now the value. So now it's empty, I can copy it in and uh, do this, or I can type it in in one string without the aid of the advanced editor. And then I get an error if it's not working. Or I use the advanced editor to see, okay, this actually has been a valid unit. I didn't know that. Or you can use the advanced editor for value assistance. This is currently supported for ranges, quantities, and of course we have also pick lists. Now let's go to uh, pick lists, uh, a meaningful one. Let's go back to residues in rotational crops for a more complex one. So for a crop, or no, type of crop, so here with space, you get the pick list values. Again, you can use the mouse to check this. Um, so here, you see this is quite handy to quickly fill in the data. Again, you can also decide if there are some um, if, if, you, if you know what to do, you can start typing in and then press enter, it will, it will auto-complete. Okay, now um, it is a bit of a problem of embedding text fields into other single line of fields, like, like uh, the, the pick lists, because in a text field, if you start, uh, if you press enter, this is actually a new line. So this is a bit of um, a change in navigation, which you need to know right now. We may change this in the future. But what we do is uh, to avoid that if you start entering data, um, that the whole display will be used up. We have 
a maximum height here. This is a bad example because uh, let's, let's again control A sele uh, selects all, delete, deletes everything. This is a, a very small field with 222.5. Let's look for a large field. So this is a very large field with 32,000 characters. Let's go for that one because here apparently IUclid uh, expects a lot of test, uh, text. So I enter some dummy data here. What you notice here right now is this key has appeared during typing. So we restrict the height and then if you want to manage your real big content, you maximize this field. We are now still in this field. You still see it highlighted so you know where you are. Crop information history also find it displayed here. So now you can go whatever to a dummy document. Let's say this is relevant information. You can put it in here. This is not a rich text field, so it gets converted. But just to show you, and it also shows you, uh, it showed you, sorry, here, uh, how many characters you've used up. So going back, here's the information. But again, in a smaller form, so it doesn't use up all the information. Again, this gets clearer when we come to rich text fields. Uh, let's go to rich text fields, which are down here. Um, again, here we also restrict the height. We allow the maximization of the, the field. And then you get uh, enough space to work with uh, longer contexts. The control here um, is the same as you find in IUclid. It looks different, but it's technically completely the same. So you can now here actually put in format text. Let's put in something more formatted. Let's see whether we can take over the bold formatting. Okay, here we are. So this is the rich text field. Now let's save this and quickly check how this looks like in a Euclid. So this is where I need to scroll down, 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 down. And this is uh, what we've just entered. And you know, this is one of the problems in a Euclid that those editing fields are relatively small and get small when you get out uh, again they uh, reduce back to this uh, tiny size. Okay, final thoughts here on editing. Uh, analytical methods is a very complex document. Here the overview is very handy and also the ability of resizing because as you see here, the tables really become very complex. And to demonstrate uh, you that we are really robust, I just deliberately take some garbage data. Just I take some, any type of data, paste it in to show you that something reasonable comes out. So this, of course, a text field takes everything. This pick list is apparently an open pick list, accepts it, but with indications this is well. So you see the validation is really robust. It tells you exactly uh, the status. And now if you have validation errors, you cannot save. Good. Now let's switch to the final import part. Again, this hasn't really changed compared to the um, previous version just a little bit of layouting. So I keep this part relatively short. The IAF format is a CSV type of format. Uh, let's see, do I still have the uh, one example in here? Okay, no, I don't have it. Let's, let's open it as an example. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. This is an IEF example, as you, and as you can see, it's not 
<laughs> it's not made to be user-readable, user it's made to be auto-generated. In um, upcoming uh, release, it's not clear when, we will support XML and or JSON. This is uh, currently being under development and evaluation. As you see here right now, this is the actual pack data, which we have seen before. So here are the scenarios and the remarks we've put in. Actually, I created this data by, ex by an exporting function in IIP. So this format is uh, for export and import as well. <coughs> Apologies. Now, I have already... Um, no, let's do this again. I can now load an IEF file, which I have prepared in an in-house system. It checks whether the formats really match. So this IEF file was uh, created with an IUglid version set 6, 7, 10, 1 in mind. The target version is the same, so it should work. Otherwise, there may be issues. You know, IUglid format versions uh, can change. So we now have imported five jobs as part of this one file. Um, so each entity in this file is considered a job. If I click on here, notice that the right uh, side changes coloring to blue. Jobs are indicated as blue. And I can now preview this job uh, in a in the same manner as I would look at as, as an IUGLID document. So we use the same form. It looks as an IUGLID, but it's not. It's a preview. And you can use this preview in order to see, and let's, let's uh, look at another document. This is again the job information. And you can see, hey, I actually have already three uh, gap documents in my data set where I want to import into. Again, we want to import into IRP Demo 140. We have seen we have three gap documents. So what do I do now? Uh, the IRP tells me there are potential update candidates. Uh, and if appropriate, it will suggest you an update candidate. If the type and the name match, as in this case, it will suggest yes, we suggest that you update uh, this ref, uh, respective IUGLID instance because it has the same type and name. Unfortunately, there are no other uh, mapping attributes here for documents. If you do the same thing for, let's say, reference substance, you, you can use cas number and cas name uh, for information on how uh, are you, uh, mapping candidates are determined. Look at look at the documentation here. So going back here to the documents, this document would now be, if I apply the jobs, sorry, this job would then be a replacement of this GAP1. It would overwrite it. Uh, this GAP2 document would uh, create a new instance indicated by the plus because the name uh, does not uniquely match because we have two gap two. So what I can do right now, if I click the lower part and now I turn to the red color again, I can preview what is in a Euclid and I'm now really looking in a Euclid. Here is the a Euclid UUID. And if I cl click back up here, I see the job again. So I can compare the two. In future versions, we want to make this compare uh, more advanced. Imagine um, two columns here, two fields, what are filled, one for the job, one for a matching um, a Euclid entity, and you could see the differences right away. So actually really field comparison uh, to help you um, to decide whether you really want to import and when you import what actually changes. The problem uh, in the current IUGLID is that you can uh, import uh, duplicates over and over. There are no quality gates 
which would, for example, prevent that you import the same reference substance with the same cos name and number over and over again. So now let's um, simply run those jobs. Uh, what we can also do first is delete this job. Let's say we don't like it. Uh, let, let's lead, delete that one. So we are back with those three jobs. Uh, these two jobs would be update jobs indicated here. Um, we said, okay, for this gap one, there is a match here. Gap two will actually create a new one because we have decided so. So let's do it. So now the jobs are run. Let's simply go back here to the respective substance data set. Let's go complete. And now we need to do a little refresh. This is a minor issue. This should come automatically. And here we are now with our new GAP2 document. OK, so this is a very quick overview of the new functionality. If you want to contact us, please do so. Please download and use. If you find any issues, please also, please be so kind and report them. You have some predefined email lists available here. And also if you think, uh, and you have any ideas and suggestions for future enhancements, you can also supply your ideas. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, stay tuned. The next release is planned for May and next releases, subsequent releases will be available every, let's say, two, three, four months with new functionality. Thank you and bye-bye.